Before going on with live components and other topics, let's spend a few minutes on our UI. At the moment, uh, products and trades are rendered in a table using the default uh, Phoenix uh, CSS. Our goal is to have a dashboard that looks like this, um, like the, the one of the demo page. So let's start by copying some assets from uh, the repo. You find all the links in the description below. So uh, first we copy uh, the Poity Coins uh, CSS file and we import it in the app as CSS file, import Poity Coins as CSS. Then we download and copy a few uh, images. First, the background, uh, which is uh, an SVG image, then uh, the crypto icons for uh, our uh, SVG images for BTC, Ethereum, and Litecoin. And then we remove from the root uh, layout the header. Okay. Okay, we see that now we have the blue background uh, without the um, without the uh, the header. We can now refactor the code in the crypto dashboard uh, live module, uh, our template. So we can uh, remove uh, this filter products uh, form, and actually we also remove uh, this table. We keep the this um, this uh, uh, for comprehension and we write our code inside here for um, each product. So we have a div for each product and the class is product component. We will see that uh, component will refer uh, to live components uh, in the next lesson. Then uh, we use the class currency container. So we write a div with the crypto name. At the moment, we just write the um, product currency pair. Okay. Then the price container, price container, dev uh, class price, where we write the, uh, the price, so trade, um, trade price. Okay, then the exchange name. And uh, the trade at, so trade time. Dev class trade time. Uh, trade, traded at. Let's see the result. Okay, let's add BTC USD, Coinbase. Nice, much better. So we see the exchange name, uh, the traded at time, and the price. So we now need to add uh, the icon. Instead of the currency pair, it would be nice to have uh, the name uh, Bitcoin and uh, also here the dollar symbol. And instead of this uh, time string, traded at uh, date time string, it would be better to have a, a nicer human readable time string. So we need to write some functions, some helpers. Uh, and since these helpers will be useful also in other modules, 
it's better to write these helpers in a separate module. Like here, for example, we can call them product helpers. So it's a poetic coins uh, web and product uh, helpers. To render better names like Bitcoin uh, instead of uh, BTC USD, uh, we need uh, to extract the crypto name and uh, the fiat uh, symbols. Uh, and Coinbase and Bitstamp have a different uh, currency pairs. So we need two functions. So we call this function, so, well, it's the same function with two clauses. Uh, it's called crypto and fiat symbols. So, so what uh, it does is for uh, Coinbase, it returns the crypto symbol and fiat symbol, which means that, for example, for a product which is BTC USD, it returns a map which is uh, crypto. The crypto symbol is BTC and uh, the fiat symbol is USD. And uh, here for Bitstamp, we have BTC USD and it returns uh, BTC uh, for the crypto symbol and fiat symbol is uh, USD. So in this way, we always have BTC as a crypto symbol, no matter what the exchange name and the same for the fiat symbol. So for Coinbase, we just need to split the currency pair, uh, down case, and then we have the crypto symbol and fiat symbol. And uh, for Bitstamp, the first uh, three uh, characters of the string uh, are uh, the crypto symbol, and then the other three uh, characters are uh, the fiat symbol. So why we need this function? Because to define this crypto name helper uh, with the argument product, what we do is to, uh, is to use this crypto and fiat symbol, we pass the product, and then we pattern match the crypto symbol and we return a proper label. And we write a similar helper function with the, for the fiat character, so USD and Euro, so we return the proper dollar and uh, Euro character. Then we write these two other helpers, crypto symbol and fiat symbol. It just returns the crypto symbol. So if the product is uh, Coinbase BTC USD, this returns a uh, BTC string in down case. And similar here, it returns USD string. Then here we alias the routes. So we can define this crypto icon uh, helper where the first argument is the connection, then the product. So the crypto, uh, we get the crypto symbol. What we want to do is to return uh, the, the path for uh, the proper uh, crypto icon. So what we do is to get the crypto symbol uh, which means uh, BTC um, or uh, Ethereum or uh, Litecoin. And then we return the, um, the static path. And let's also add this function, fiat symbols. Uh, it returns just the available fiat symbols, uh, Euro and USD at the moment. Okay, we have all the helpers we need. We just need to import this module inside uh, this live view module. So Poity Coins web product helpers. So this helper, we can now use these helpers inside our template. So here inside currency container, we can write, we can add this image icon. We use the crypto icon helper, uh, the socket, and uh, product, then instead of a uh, currency pair, we use this crypto name helper where we pass the product and we can use all these helpers inside uh, this, uh, the template because uh, they are pure functions. 
which means uh, uh, for a specific product, we will always have uh, the same uh, return value. So in this way, LiveView is able to track the changes. Okay, then uh, the price. So here we just need to add the fiat character, fiat character, uh, product, then we leave the exchange name as it is, and uh, the traded ad. So the traded ad, uh, we need to add another helper, which is human date time, we pass the date time, and this returns uh, the, the month, the day and the year. The month is um, the three letters of the month, and then the uh, hour, minute, and seconds. And we use this human date time. Okay, let's see the result. Okay much nicer. So we're really close to this result here, apart obviously from the, uh, the chart. Uh, so we need the, uh, you see here, Euro and uh, USD. So this part, we list the, uh, the fiat symbols uh, and we activate uh, the, uh, the current one. So here above this price class, we write, so we list the fiat symbols, uh, which means uh, uh, USD and uh, Euro at the moment. And if the fiat symbol for this product is, uh, is this one, we return an active class. Okay, nice. We need to um, now rewrite the toolbar. So we are going to put our form to add a product inside our uh, toolbar. So the toolbar, let's define the toolbar with the div, poity coins, toolbar, we use this class. Okay, and then uh, there is the title, title, Poetic coins. Then we have uh, the form, our form. And so we have a select. Let's use the class select product. So here we use uh, the for comprehension. But instead of just listing all the options, it would be nice to have uh, uh, grouped options. And we define this function grouped products by exchange name. So we use this function in uh, this uh, for comprehension. So we have the exchange name and the product for this exchange name. So here we use opt group label. So the label, the label is uh, the exchange name. And inside this opt group, we list all the product options. So we have the for comprehension, product, products, do, and, and inside here, the options, an option for each product. And instead of, so the, uh, the value is the product ID, the product string, okay. We can use the helpers to have a better uh, label here. So crypto uh, name, product, and then like fiat character product. 
Okay. Okay, we can use a plus here to say add product and we close the div. And here we can wrap these product cards into a div plus a product a components. So we have our toolbar. We select, we have the, uh, the select tag with, uh, with the exchange names, we select Bitcoin US dollar, and we have our nice uh, product card. Our template is becoming quite long and probably should be moved to a, a template file. And before moving it to a template file, uh, in the next lesson, we're going to see how to use uh, live components and functions to refactor uh, this template.